would be and manifesting the truth of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the Hour of Faith, originating from the sanctuary of the Faith Baptist Church of Altoona, Pennsylvania, 315 40th Street in the Highland Park section of the city. As you participate in today's broadcast, may the Lord challenge your heart with the word. Thank each and every one of you for joining us in our media ministries as this service comes to you from the Faith Baptist Church of Altoona, Pennsylvania, the United States of America. And we do thank you very, very much for the pleasure of your company. And of course, we are in the Christmas season and uh, singing songs that relate to the incarnation, the birth of our wonderful Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and it's a blessed time to be able to do that. Our theme this year here at the Faith Baptist Church is Born to Die. And that's what uh, Christmas is all about. It's the fact that Jesus Christ came into the world not to be placed in a manger, but to go to the cross, to suffer and to bleed and die and to resurrect again from the grave so that through faith in Him we might have life eternal and life abundant. And it's interesting that right here in, in, the, in our church, even behind me, we see the picture, as it were, of the nativity that shows the incarnation, as it were, that Jesus Christ, as a babe, was born in a cave and placed in a manger. Every now and then you'll hear people say he was born in a manger. No, that would have been kind of tough. He was born in a cave and then placed in the manger. And uh, as a result of that, we have great salvation because, you see, uh, 33 and a half years later, he went to the cross. And on that cross, he suffered and bled and died. And then the third day, he arose again triumphantly. Jesus was born to die. And uh, I've just been thinking in the last day or two, what would we miss? What would we not have if Jesus Christ would not have come to this earth? Did you ever think about it? I've come up with over 30 things so far. And uh, I'm going to make it a 30-point sermon uh, one of these days, maybe. But just a couple of things that I wrote down. There would be no salvation. There would be no church. There would be no manifestation of God's power. There would be no lasting kingdom. There would be no declaration of God. There would be no gospel. There would be no presentation of love. There would be no peace. There would be no fulfilling of prophecy. And we could go on and on. And uh, this morning in, in prayer meeting, one of our members, our deacon chairman, Alex Sittman, said we wouldn't have anything beyond Genesis 3.13. And you say, why is that? Well, in Genesis chapter 3, we have the fall of the human race through Adam and Eve. And beginning with Genesis 3.14, 
we see God pronouncing the curse on, on the earth through, first of all, speaking to the serpent or Satan. And so think of that. Had Jesus Christ not come to the earth, we wouldn't have anything beyond Genesis chapter 3 and verse 13. And I would encourage you throughout the course of this Christmas season to remember these things. You see, I'm concerned, and I'm sure that you are too, that so many times we go throughout the Christmas season and we get caught up in the activities, whether it's at school or at home or on the job or even at the church. And we forget what this time of the year is all about. It's about Christ. Let's keep him in that center focus. Because, listen, if it was not for the incarnation of Jesus Christ, we would not be here at all right now. Think about that. I really want you to encourage you to think about that in these next days as we anticipate Christmas uh, coming. And, and I do want to invite you to go to our website here at the Faith Baptist Church of Altoona. It's www.fbcoutuna.org. And there you can learn about the activities of the church throughout the Christmas season. That's updated every Monday morning. So you can learn not only about Christmas activities, but other activities as well. Particularly, I'd like to invite you to our candlelight Christmas Eve service coming up on Christmas Eve, December 24th at 6 o'clock. And we set it for 6 o'clock so that you can come and bring your family and then fellowship with us here at the church and then go fellowship with your family after the evening service. And again, the theme is going to be Born to Die. There will be special music, there will be readings, there will be a meditation from the Word of God, and then there will be the lighting of candles. And, and we invite you all to come out to that. And that's uh, Christmas Eve, December the 24th, at 6 o'clock in the evening, our candlelight Christmas Eve service. We'd love to have you participate. The key is that you know Christ as Savior. And I'm just going to ask you today, do you? This is the Christmas season when Jesus came into the world. And in Matthew chapter 1, it was announced to Joseph that Jesus Christ would come into the world to what? Save his people from their sins. Has he saved you? If he hasn't, he wants to. Today I'm going to be speaking from Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, where it tells us that Jesus Christ came into this world to seek and to save those who are lost. If you are not yet saved, he is seeking you. And he would love to save you. And I would encourage you to think of that. And so invite him into your life, as it were. Call upon the name of the Lord Jesus. Ask him to save you. And he will give you the forgiveness of sins and the newness of life. Thank the Lord for this Christmas season. But let's keep Christ in the center. Make sure you know the Lord. Now, if we can serve you, uh, spiritually speaking, don't hesitate to contact us. Our phone number is 814-944-2894. That's 814-944-2894. And... Uh, of course, you can contact us as well through our website, which is www.fbcaltuna.org. There's other information on the screen as well if you're watching, but we would be delighted to minister to you in any way we possibly can. As I said, our theme is Born to Die. And number 102 in our hymn book is a song that says that. And we're going to sing it here in the sanctuary, and we invite you at home to sing along with us as well. We'll stand and sing, Born to Die, number 102.
Hunter Heaton. bless you for that message and song. If you have a copy of God's Word, please take it and turn with me to the Gospel of Luke, 19th chapter. Luke chapter 19, and uh, I would uh, remind you that this is the message of Zacchaeus. When we were young, we would sing that song, Zacchaeus was a wee little man, and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Remember that? Well, it comes from this passage of Scripture, Luke chapter 19. And we read this and study it as it goes along with our theme, Jesus was born to die, and you will see why as we work our way down through it. Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and I invite you to stand out of respect for God and His Word as I read and you follow along. Luke 19 1 to 10. The word of God says, And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans, and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who he was, and could not for the press, because he was little stature. And by the way, the press doesn't talk about CNN and Fox. That simply means the crowd was so big he couldn't 
Zacchaeus couldn't see Christ. Goes on to say, and he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. And he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all murmured, saying that he was going to be a guest with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. And Jesus said unto him, This day is salvation come to this house. For as much as he also is a son of Abraham. And here's our text, verse 10. For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Let's say that together, shall we? For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to read your word. I pray now, dear Lord, that you would teach us your word as we study your word and use this study today to bring the lost to Christ, to edify the believers, but above all, to glorify you. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. And all of God's children said, thank you. You may be seated. Well, indeed, our theme throughout this course of the Christmas season is he was born to die. Jesus Christ was born to die. We've been emphasizing that. The fact of the matter is, he did not come into this world to go to the manger. He came into this world to go to the cross. And on that cross, to suffer and to bleed and to die and to have eternal life for every one of us who call upon his name. And we can thank the Lord for that. That's what the Christmas season is all about. I was just thinking earlier this morning when I heard somebody say that Jesus is the reason for the season. That's been around a long time, that phrase, that statement. I don't actually recall uh, when it came on the scene or who it was that established it. But for many, many years, we've been talking about that, listening to it, thinking about it, that Jesus is the reason for the season. Why? Because he came to die. He was born to die. And he did that on the cross of Calvary. Now there are many passages of scripture in the word of God where it teaches us concerning some element of the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there are many passages that remind us of his mission. But I think that one of the clearest, most precise, most direct verse of scripture that relates to the purpose for Jesus Christ coming into the world is the one that we read here this morning. Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, where it says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Think about that for a little bit. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ, was come to seek and to save that which was lost. And by the way, that involves every one of us. Because we are all born in this world in the lost estate, that is, separated from God. But Jesus came into this world nearly 2,000 years ago to seek and to save every one of us. And that's what we are going to be focusing on throughout the course of the message today. But let me uh, uh, take some time to uh, share some observations about this passage of Scripture. Uh, We know that this text is talking about Zacchaeus, we little man. A wee little man was he. Uh, We all know that song, as I mentioned uh, earlier. At least many of us know that. One time that was a contemporary song and probably wasn't allowed to be sung in most fundamental churches. But Zacchaeus was a wee little man and a wee little man was he. He climbed up into a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. We remember that, don't we? It comes from this passage of Scripture. And it's interesting to look at Zacchaeus We don't know why he had such a desire to see the Lord, but he did. He couldn't see him because there were so many people also wanting to see the Lord. So he climbed up into this sycamore tree. 
A sycamore tree was a strong tree, and it had sprawling branches. Some of them were lower to the ground, some of them were higher. But those sycamore trees grew in such a way that probably the branch grew out over the road. So as Jesus was coming down the road, Nicodemus, uh, Zacchaeus was able to look right down and see Jesus. And of course, in our text, we, say, we see here that Jesus actually looked up to see Zacchaeus. And, and he had that desire to, to see Jesus. We don't know why, but he did. And we see that he got saved. He, he came to the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior on that day. And that was a big thing because Zacchaeus was a tax collector, a publican, as they called them. Not only was he a tax collector, but it tells us in this text that he was the chief of tax collectors, the chief among publicans. That simply means that he was probably the head over a region. He, he was there in the metropolis of Jericho back in that day. And he probably had tens, if not hundreds, of tax collectors under him. And so he was, as it were, a boss. But he was also very rich. And keep in mind that his riches no doubt came as a result of fraud and embezzlement. But he wanted to see Jesus. He wanted to understand who this Jesus Christ is. And so he climbed up in that sycamore tree to see him. And when Jesus came by, he said, Zacchaeus, come down because I'm going to go to your house. As a matter of fact, it's interesting to see how uh, Jesus addressed this in verse 5. It says, Jesus said, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must abide at thy house. That is an imperative. It's the only time in the word of God where Jesus invited himself to somebody else's house. He always waited for an invitation. But Jesus had an imperative. You see, he knew Zacchaeus' heart. And he knew Zacchaeus' need. And he knew that if Zacchaeus' heart need was to be met, Jesus himself had to spend some time in Zacchaeus' house. And so he did. And as I said, as a result, Zacchaeus came to the Lord, as it were. Jesus had business to do with Zacchaeus, and that business was kept. And Zacchaeus became a follower of Jesus. Now, as we look at this 10th verse, there are some interesting phrases and terminology therein that uh, we could spend a lot of time on. I, I don't want to focus on all of these words because I want to focus on that middle phrase where it says that he was come to seek and to save that which was lost. But you'll notice that the verse opens with the phrase, for the Son of Man. The Son of Man. This is the name that Jesus more readily called himself as he taught, as he went up and down, as it were, the Jordan Valley and the uh, and up into Nazareth and Jerusalem and so forth, he referred to himself more than any other thing as the Son of Man. In fact, 83 times that phrase is mentioned in the Gospels. And 14 times it's mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew. That's how Jesus wanted to be known. Why, you might ask? Well, because of what it means. The phrase... Son of Man, first of all, speaks of the humility and the humanity of Christ. Son of Man indicates that he was indeed a human being and he was a, a part of the human race. He was a part of mankind, as it were. And so it speaks of, of his humility. In eternity past, he was in the glory of the Father, in heaven, glorified there. But when he came to the earth... He humbled himself to become a man. Philippians chapter 2, that we'll make reference to a little bit later on, speaks concerning that. But the fact of the matter is, it shows his humanity and his humility. But it is also a phrase that is messianic, used of, of, of prophets in the Old Testament concerning the Messiah. And among other places, it, that's found in Daniel chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. You can study that on your own later on if you wish, and I would encourage you to do that. But the fact of the matter is, when Jesus refers to himself as the Son of Man, he is simply talking about the fact that he is a humble human being, and at the same time, he is the Messiah. 
the King of kings and the Lord of lords. What a Savior. What a God. The Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Then it says the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. And we would do well to focus a little bit on this term lost. You ask the question, who is lost? All of humanity is lost at birth. The moment we are born, we are born sinners. And we are lost in our condition apart from Jesus Christ. When we talk about this theological concept of being lost, it refers to the fact that all those apart from Jesus Christ are wandering about in the world of sin. And they are under the power of Satan and they need salvation. They are wandering about in the world of sin. They need salvation. And the fact of the matter is, they don't even know that they are lost. Now, I don't know if you've ever been lost or not. Sometimes you can get lost and know it. And sometimes you can get lost and not know it until you don't end up in your destination. I was out doing some hunting yesterday and in the process of it, uh, sort of tracking a deer. Uh, well, no, it wasn't sort of. I really was tracking a deer up through the, the, the laurel. And, uh, you know, you can get into mountain laurel, and if you're not careful, you can get twisted up and lost. And uh, as I was going up through there, my phone beep, 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 beep. Well, what that means is that there's a weather alert coming. And so I got out my phone and it said, it is going to snow at 1239 where you are. Isn't that great? Do we can know those things today? Anyway, I thought, I don't want to be up here in the middle of the laurel and a whiteout comes through because you can get lost. My dad and I were hunting a number of years ago in an area that we were very familiar with. And, and the whiteout came through and we, 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 we were lost. We had a hard time finding our way out of it. Sometimes we're lost and we know it. Sometimes we're lost and we don't know it. But the fact of the matter is, humanity is lost from the point of birth, wandering about in the world of sin, under the power of Satan, and we have the need of salvation. And so when it says, the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost, it's talking about the fact that Jesus came to save the whole world. Now, let's focus on that middle phrase, as it goes along with our theme, born to die. For the Son of Man is come, say this with me, to seek and to save that which was lost. I submit to you this morning that Jesus Christ is a seeking Savior, and Jesus Christ is a saving Savior. Let's focus on that for a few minutes today. First of all, he is a seeking Savior. When it says Jesus came to seek the lost, that is a very, very active endeavor of Christ. It was not uh, a, a nonchalant seeking. It was not, a, an, an, as it were, an oh-hum seeking. Jesus Christ came into this world to actively, progressively, continuously seek those who are lost, including those who lived in his day as well as those of us who live today. And so we have a couple of questions to ask. Number one, why did Jesus Christ come to the earth to seek the lost? And how did Jesus Christ come to the earth to seek the lost? First of all, why did Christ come to the earth to seek the lost? Well, as I've stated, it doesn't hurt to review, that humanity is lost. Now, the thing of humanity being spiritually lost that we need to understand is that humanity is lost and they don't know it. Did you get that? Humanity is lost and humanity does not know it. You say, Pastor Gary, what do you mean by that? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 tells us that the natural man, that is the unsaved man, does not understand the things of the Spirit of God. They are spiritually discerned. And so, you see, the unsaved person does not realize that he or she is unsaved. And therefore, the unsaved person needs somebody to tell them, you're spiritually lost. You need to come to Christ. 
Years ago, a great preacher would say, in order to get somebody saved, you've got to get them lost first. Now, they are already lost. When we lead somebody to Christ, we don't need to make them lost. They are already lost. But when we talk to somebody about the Lord, we need to teach them from the pages of Scripture that they are spiritually lost. You get the point. And so, the world, those who do not know Christ, are lost, wandering away from the Lord, and they don't know it. Some of them are religious. Some of them are not. But the fact of the matter is, they're lost, and they don't know it. So Jesus came to seek the lost, because lost humanity does not know it. But secondly, he came to fulfill a mission. And what was that mission? In John chapter 10, it tells us there that Jesus came to give life and to give life that's more abundant. In John chapter 3 and verse 17, Jesus, it says that Jesus came not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Yes, Jesus Christ came into this world to lost humanity. He came to seek lost humanity so that lost humanity might find Christ and might have a life that's worth living. That, my dearly beloved friends, is what Christmas is all about. It's not about Christmas trees, and we've got a few. It's not about poinsettias, and we've got a few. Those, those are nice. That's decorations, those are nice. And that's all nice. There's significance to some of those things. But Jesus, Jesus didn't come to give us a tree. He came to give us salvation, eternal life. To seek those who are lost. He had a mission to fulfill. I want to ask you this morning. Is Christ seeking you right now? If you're not saved. If you've never trusted Christ as Savior. He is seeking you right now. And he has you under the, the voice of this preacher. So that you will respond. And say yes Lord Jesus I trust you to save me. Jesus Christ came to seek those who are lost, because we are lost, and he had a mission to fulfill. But then the next question is, how did Christ come to the earth to seek the lost? Well, this would lead us down the road of great theological studies that I don't have the time to delve into uh, today. And so I just want to, if I can, paint a picture for you as to how Christ came into the world to seek those who are lost. And sort of a six-step six process, a six-step picture. And, and you probably know these things, but think about them and listen to them again for the first time, as it were. How did Christ come to the earth to seek the lost? First of all, he left heaven to come to the earth. Philippians chapter 2 and verse uh, 5 through 8 reminds us that even though he was equal with God, yet he, he set aside the great glory that went along with being God to come to this earth and humble himself to be born as a man, to be born in the cave, and then to die, but not only to die, but die the death of the cross. So he left heaven to come to the earth. And then Jesus Christ, as he left heaven to come to the earth to seek the lost, did it by calling people to himself directly. The Bible teaches us in the Gospels, and particularly Mark, that right after Jesus Christ began his earthly ministry, he began to call people to follow him. You all remember Mark chapter 1, where when he was speaking to, to Peter and Andrew and James and John, he said, I will make you fishers of men. Fishers of, I don't think he sang that song. But he said, follow me and I will make you what? To become fishers of men. He personally went out to seek people. He didn't designate it. He did that certainly, as we note this next point I'm going to bring out. But Jesus himself did it. He didn't just tell us to go seek the lost. He did it himself. And he, be he began it right away. But then thirdly, in seeking the lost, he sent his disciples to seek others as well. We see that in Luke chapter 10, where when you read that passage of Scripture, he sent out 70 of his disciples, two by two, to go into the various cities to give the message of redemption. Jesus came to this earth, called people, and sent his own disciples out to seek the lost. 
He wanted people to understand the concept of sin and salvation. But then, number four, as we continue to build this picture, he established the Great Commission. In Mark chapter 16 and verse 15, he says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to what? Every creature. You see, he came to the earth. He sent people directly. He uh, Actually, he called people directly. Then he sent them directly. Then he sends you and me through the Great Commission. The way Jesus is seeking the lost today is through you and me who know Jesus Christ as Savior telling others about the Lord. But then the fifth step in this great process is that Jesus taught a lot about heaven and salvation, did he not? Oh, he did. And he did it clearly. Take some time to read through John chapter 14 one of these days. He starts off by saying, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I'd have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will what? Come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. So he talks about heaven. And then in that great sixth verse, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So you see, Jesus directly sought people himself by teaching about heaven and salvation. And then finally, the way Jesus seeks people is by the convicting ministry of the Holy Spirit. Again, when you study through the Gospel of John, you find that that Jesus sent the Spirit of God into the world to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. When the Spirit of God convicts an unsaved person, person of their unsaved condition. It's Jesus Christ who has sent the Holy Spirit to do that. And, and the Bible tells us that in John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. The reason why you are a Christian today is because at some point, the Spirit of God convicted you of your sin of unbelief and you had the opportunity to trust Christ. And you did. And so you see, that's how Jesus sought the lost, by leaving heaven and coming to the earth, by calling people to him directly, by sending forth disciples to seek others, by establishing the Great Commission, by teaching about heaven and salvation, by convicting the lost through the Holy Spirit. Aren't you glad today Jesus Christ sought you? You didn't seek him. I say that again. You didn't seek him. You say, well, I I thought I did. No. You know why you think you did? Because the Spirit of God convicted you of your sin of unbelief. And when you realized that you were a non-believing sinner, you responded to Christ. It's Christ who did it all through the ministry of His Holy Spirit in your life. I ask you this morning, is Christ seeking you right now? Is He? You say, Pastor Gary, how do I know if He is? If you've never yet trusted Jesus, and I want to encourage you to stop and think about it. If you have never yet trusted Jesus Christ as your Savior, God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, right now, God has you under the sound of this message seeking you. Whether you are in this sanctuary or joining us by Media Ministries, How are you going to respond? Jesus came to seek you. You see how valuable you are? He didn't want you to be lost forever in eternity in the lake of fire. He came to seek you. If you're not yet saved, I would encourage you today to call upon the name of the Lord. Ask Him to save you and He will. But if you're saved today, oh, Yes, praise the Lord. Somebody ought to say, hallelujah. Somebody ought to say, amen. Somebody ought to say, praise the Lord. Man, you guys got up early this morning, didn't you? Those are the things we need to be saying because he sought us all. And particularly if we've responded.
The Son of Man came into this world. He, he was born to die, to seek the lost. He is a seeking Savior, but He is also a saving Savior. You see it there in Luke chapter 19, verse 10. It says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And remember, we are all lost. But we ask the question, why did Christ come to the earth to save the lost? Well, again, I remind you that Jesus saving the lost is an active, continual thing. Through the Spirit of God, every day, 24 hours a day, worldwide, Christ is seeking to save the lost through the convicting power of the Holy Spirit of God. Why does he do it? Number one, because the whole world is lost in sin. Take, take some time one of these days to read down through uh, Romans chapter 9, verses 9 through 23, because it says in there, we've all gone out of, our, uh, out of the way. We've all become uh, uh, unprofitable. There is none who is good. No, not one. In other words, we, we are lost and we don't have the capability of saving ourselves. But how serious is that? Oh, I could turn you to a lot of passages of Scripture today. But turn with me, if you would, please, to the book of Ephesians. I, I, I really need you to see this, particularly if you don't know the Lord. If you do know the Lord, you see this and it should cause you to rejoice. But turn to the book of Ephesians, the second chapter and verse 12. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 12, where the Apostle Paul is speaking to the Ephesians and reminding them what they were before their salvation, what they were before they were saved. Notice what he says. That at that time, before you were saved, you were without Christ, being aliens of the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. Uh, this is a dispensational uh, uh, passage of Scripture as it relates to the dispensation between the law and grace. It is a passage that makes uh, uh, that, that is addressing uh, the Jews and the Gentiles, as it were. But I just want to focus on what it says to every unsaved person. If you aren't saved today, if you've not yet come to Christ, you're without Christ. That's obvious. But then it says, you are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. Now, of course, that's talking about a lot of blessing that God has given to Israel. And, 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 and by the way, as, as Christians, uh, we, have, uh, we benefit from a lot of the blessings that God has given Israel, particularly in the millennium that's up and coming. But here's the point, uh, church. Are you awake? Say Amen. If you've not yet come to Christ, you are an alien of God. We hear a lot in the news today about aliens not coming from Mars. We settled that last week. Remember last week when we settled that? That there are no people living on any other planet. If you missed last Sunday's morning, morning's message, you missed the message. Didn't tell you what kind. You just missed it. We're talking, and, and we're not talking about an alien trying to come from another country either. If you don't know Christ, you are an alien of God. You have nothing with God. And he goes on and he says, strangers of the covenant of promise. God's promises to you are, you can't claim them because you don't know the Lord. And then it says, having no hope. No hope. No hope. Listen. People commit suicide every day because they have no hope. Where is hope found? My hope is in the Lord, you see. And then he says, without God in this world. You know, if you're religious, that doesn't mean you've got God. There's a lot of religious people who are lost. A lot of religious people who will spend eternity in hell. But the fact of the matter is, because you are lost, if you've not trusted Christ, you are lost. And that says, you're without Christ. You're aliens from God. You're strangers from the covenants of promise. You have no hope. You are without God. Now, how do you like that? You better not like it at all. Say, Pastor Gary, I didn't come to church to hear that. 
or I didn't turn on the radio or the TV or the Internet to hear that. Well, you ought to thank God that you're hearing it today because it's going to give you the opportunity to come to Christ. You see, that is the serious condition of the lost. And the fact of the matter is, no lost person can save himself or herself. As it says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 20, that no man is justified, no woman is justified by trying to even keep the deeds of the law. So you see, Jesus Christ came into the world to save the lost because we're all lost, without hope, without God, separated from God, aliens in relationship with God, And we can't save ourselves. I ask you this morning, are you still in your lost condition right now? If you've never trusted Jesus Christ as Savior, you are. You ought to thank the Lord that Jesus came to save you. But the next question is, How did Christ come to the earth to save the lost? You'll say, well, Pastor Gary, that's easy. He just came to the earth. Yeah, he did. Wish I had time to go into some theological teaching here today that's deep. I was very, very impressed earlier in prayer meeting this morning to find that Alex Sittman reads theology books. He, He impressed me. He was reading, happened to read even the same theology book that I read in the same page I read. So, Alex, you can leave now because. uh, You know, what I'm going to share with you is probably very, very basic. But I want you to think about it because it's what Christmas is all about, as it were. When we talk about how did Christ come to the earth to save the lost? Eight points very rapidly in passing. Number one, Jesus did it by an act of the greatest humility. We already talked about that in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 8, that he gave up the glories of heaven to come down to this earth. What an act of humility. That's the greatest act of humility of all. He had an eternity past the glory of God. He gave that up. Then there's the act of the greatest sacrificial death. 1 Peter 3.18 says that Christ the just died for you and me, the unjust. Greatest act of a sacrificial death. Thirdly, by an act of the greatest love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But in John 15.13, Jesus says, There's no greater love than a man to lay down his life for his friends. And Jesus did that for you and for me. Then he did so by an act of the greatest grace. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty might become rich. Thank God for the riches of God's grace on your behalf. He did so by an act of the greatest atonement. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 24, it tells us that Jesus Christ came down to heal us spiritually and he took away our sin through his work on the cross. Thank God for that. Then he did it by the act of the greatest resurrection. Thank God that no Satan could hold him in the tomb. Thank God that when it came time for Jesus to resurrect just like that, he arose again triumphantly, fighting off all the forces of evil, just as we might fight, brush off dust from our arms, like Vicky Alessi makes me do every Sunday morning before I come out to church. If you want to know why, ask her. She puts powder on my face so I look better on TV, and she always spills it on my coat. But you get, <laughs> you get the point. <laughs> then he does so by the act of the greatest intercession. The Bible, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 7, 24, he ever lives to make intercession for us. Thank God for that because that's a part of the assurance of our salvation. And then finally he does it through the, listen to this, the greatest act of glorification. The fact of the matter is, Colossians 3, 5 says that when Christ shall appear in glory, all church, listen to this. You'll appear with him in glory for all of eternity. Somebody needs to say, somebody needs to say, 
Somebody needs to say, what a Savior. Jesus Christ is the saving Savior who came into the world to save all the lost through the act of the greatest humility, a sacrificial death, His love, His grace, His atonement, His resurrection, His intercession, His glorification. Hallelujah, what a Savior in Jesus Christ the Lord. And that's what this time of the year is all about. Are you still in your lost condition today? If you've not trusted Christ as Savior, you are. And I would encourage you right now to look at your life. If you can't find a time when you've trusted Jesus, do it now. And if you're joining us by Media Ministries, contact us here if you make a decision for Christ today. And we will be delighted to send you some information that will help you to get started right in your Christian life. You say, what does it mean to be saved? Well, you've heard me say it many times, haven't you? In this pulpit, it means to be delivered from sin, its power, its past presence, and its penalty through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Christ came into this world to seek you because you're lost. He came into this world to save you because you need salvation. If you're a Christian, rejoice in that. If you're not a Christian, call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to save you. Jesus came to seek and save the lost. As a believer, you can show, you can respond to that by showing appreciation to him through serving him, through praising him, through worshiping him, through witnessing about him, through, through being totally committed to him. And I'd encourage you to use this time of the year, this Christmas season, to actually rededicate, if you want to use those words, that word, rededicate your life to the Lord and say, Lord, in light of the fact that you sought and you saved me, I'm going to serve you, I'm going to praise you, I'm going to worship you, I'm going to witness for you, I'm going to be totally committed to you. How many will say, I'm going to do that by the grace of God? Amen. Amen. But if you're not saved, Call upon the name of the Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2 says, Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait for tomorrow. You might not live that long. You could die today. And if you die without Christ, it means eternal separation in the lake of fire. So would you right now, wherever you might be in this sanctuary or Radio, TV, the internet, Facebook, live, YouTube, wherever you are, however we are coming to you. Recognize that you're lost. Jesus came to seek you. And he's giving you the opportunity to be found because you're under the sound of the preaching of the gospel today. I would encourage you to call upon the name of the Lord and ask him to save you and he will. Then Christmas will have a meaning to you. You have the hope and the joy and the peace that only Christ can give. And beloved, if you make that decision for Christ, contact us here at the church so that we can send you some information that will help you to get started right in your Christian life. Praise God for what we have in the seeking and the saving Savior. He was born to what? Die for you and for me. Thank God it didn't stay dead. Thank God he's alive now and will be forevermore and gives life and light to all who call upon his name. Let's stand for prayer, please. Father in heaven, as we come to you this morning, we thank you again for the great opportunity that we've had to look into your word. And Lord, you know the need of every one of us today. I pray that if there's just one who does not know the Lord, that they'll come to know Christ. But Lord, may those of us who do know Christ rejoice in what we have. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you're in this sanctuary and you have a spiritual need, this altar is open to you. Please come. Otherwise, if you're joining us by Media Ministries, contact us if we can help you spiritually speaking. As we say number 301, only trust him, number 301.
participation in our worldwide broadcast of the Hour of Faith, which originated from the sanctuary of the Faith Baptist Church of Altoona, Pennsylvania, 315 40th Street in the Highland Park section of the city. Dr. Gary G. Doe and the Family of Faith welcomes you to Sunday School at 9.30, morning worship at 10.30, Sunday night service at 6, with youth programs, adult prayer and Bible study, Wednesdays at 7, with Foundations for Faith every Wednesday night during the school year. If we may ever be of any spiritual help to you, please call 814-944-2894. Log on to our website at www.fbcaltuna.org or write to the Faith Baptist Church, 31540 Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16602, USA. I'm JT Teeter. Till the next time we meet, may the Lord...